Welcome back to ILTV. I'm your host, Lynn Ferrari. Today, we have another episode for you by Warren and Julie Knox, who are slow traveling through Eastern and Western Europe with their two dogs by car. They decided to focus their travels on Europe for the next couple of years. And so since they're traveling with their two dogs, traveling via car was the most convenient way. This may be a dream for you too, but as an American, there is some complications and challenges um, to doing so. First up is the Schengen Zone. So Warren and Julie actually created another video on how they navigate the Schengen Zone, which I'll link below. But basically, they can only spend 90 out of every 180 days in Schengen countries and they have to hop out of it. The other challenge they faced was how do you purchase a car as an American without having residency in a European country? Where there's a will, there's a way. And Warren and Julie share all of their learnings and how they did this on this episode. They did lots of research and they actually uncover it all here. So I think you'll find it very useful if this is something you want to do too. They purchased a diesel Citroen Berlingo and there was some tips and tricks to doing this. Um, they also share the cost and the expenses they've incurred um, by traveling this way, which I feel will be super helpful for people and also the mistakes they've made. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you want to follow Warren and Julie's YouTube channel, you can follow along their, um, their journey and their travels. I'll link it below here. And if you like this um, style of content and you want to know more about your opportunities overseas, you can sign up for the International Living Postcards, the daily postcards, which I will link below too. And as always, I will ask you to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And finally, enjoy the episode. Hi everybody from International Living. As you know, Julie and I were traveling the world with our two dogs, but we're focusing on Europe now for the next several years, and we're doing this by car. So behind us, it's a little bit dirty right now, forgive us, is Abby, our Citroen Berlingo, which is our main mode of transportation. The reason we call her Abby is short for the abyss because she's got a lot of storage capacity, and we are getting about 45 miles Per gallon as we're driving our diesel Citroen Berlingo. We're going to tell you how you can have a car and drive around Europe and what the tricks are to be able to do this. And we're going to share with you the expenses and some of the faux pas and mistakes we made along <laughs> yeah, the way. Yeah, we have a few. Warren and I decided that we wanted to travel through Europe by car as slow roving retired nomads with our two dogs. But what we didn't realize was when we adopted our Ecuador dog, Aria, that the 5.2 kilograms she weighed at adoption day would become over 13 kilograms within a year. We had to figure out a way to travel through the continent and we knew consistently traveling by plane with a dog weighing over 13 kilograms wasn't feasible. So we decided we must travel by car. This might be a dream for some of you as well, but I won't lie. Being Americans, it was somewhat complicated and daunting to figure out how to live this dream. It seemed Europe created rules against us. And because of the Schengen zone that belongs to 27 countries, we have only 90 days every 180 days in all 27 of those countries. There are a few exceptions, which wouldn't be practical for the slow roving retired life though. We will talk further about the Schengen Zone on a future video. The second challenge for Americans, how do you own and register a car to travel through Europe without having a residency in a European country? Now you can rent a car if you're gonna be somewhere for 90 days or less and maybe that will make sense, but we're planning on being in Europe for years. So we did a lot of research and where there's a will, there's a way. We found the answers, so we're showing you and telling you about it today. So I know you are all wondering just how can an American citizen buy a car and register it in Europe? The answer is a very esoteric and challenging one to find. But after countless hours of research, we found three options. The first option was to form a corp in France, which had a lot of bureaucratic red tape, required us to remain in France for potentially up to two months while the paperwork was completed, and it would cost us thousands of dollars. Our second seemed a little confusing, the Netherlands. The Netherlands had a sort of loophole opportunity where we would essentially lease the car from a citizen of the Netherlands who would carry the insurance for us. Our third and final option seriously appeared too good to be true, Bulgaria. The country of Bulgaria offered us the simplest, least expensive, and quickest option. 
Through our research, we determined we could hire an attorney for a fee, form a nil zero corporation with a simple investment of one euro and purchase the car under the name of the corporation. Once the corporation was formed, a bank account would be open under the corporation's name and we could then purchase the car and register it under the name of the corporation. As officers of the corporation, we are allowed to drive the car and obtain insurance. One thing you need to note, the car must be purchased under the corporation number that will be assigned once the paperwork is completed. The invoice from the seller of the vehicle must include the corporation information. So now that we understood how to do this process, we had to find an attorney that understood this as well. So we found a reputable attorney in Northern Bulgaria by the name of Dmitry Dimitrov. He understood all of this esoteric information about how we could get a car and the process. So he's located in Northern Bulgaria in the city of Veliko Tarnovo. We initially emailed him in August of 2020 and we were ecstatic to hear back from him that he was willing to work with us. Now, to our surprise, he and several other people in Bulgaria warned us about buying cars in Bulgaria because they're a lot of them are Frankenstein cars. They're rebuilt and you know there was a lot of chop shops. So we chose to try to find a car that was outside of Bulgaria and to have it shipped to Bulgaria. We located a reputable car shipping company, importing company called Cars Help. That's located in Sofia, Bulgaria. The process went very, very, very smooth. They helped us to locate as well as negotiate and inspect the chosen car model that we were looking for. And we were looking for Citroen Berlingo, a vehicle Julie studied for a very long time before selecting. So with Cars Help, they allow you to submit three cars of the same model to them. And then we paid for the full inspection and the car was located in Germany and then it was uh, shipped to Bulgaria and they did the transportation. It was seamless. We've effectually nicknamed our car Abby, which is short for the Abyss due to her vast storage capacity. She's a diesel, she gets approximately 45 miles per gallon, and she's also easy to park in the tight European parking spaces. We did have one curveball. We were completely unaware the car would actually be imported into Sofia, not the city of our choice as we had expected. Since we formed the corp in Veliko Tornovo, a city three hours from Sofia, we had to temporarily register it in Sofia to allow us to drive it to Veliko Tornovo, where then we could register it for a full year. With Cars Help, this seemingly stressful buying and importing process was really made seamless. Our attorney, Demeter, was fantastic. He, he guided us from start to finish, and the price he quotes August of 2020 was honored in May of 2021. We met with him twice over a two-day period for a total of two hours. We recommend Demeter for this process as we have had extremely positive experiences with him. His assistant accompanied us to their motor vehicle government office known as a CAT and he was with us every step of the way. The process took about 90 minutes from start to finish including the Bulgarian vehicle inspection. All right, Morin, so how is our um, voyage on, in the Citroen Berlingo today? It's actually a very smooth drive. It's really exceeded our expectations. The speed, the pickup on it's been really, really good. One thing to note, we are obligated to bring the car back to Bulgaria once a year within a week of its registration anniversary for what is termed the MOT, an acronym for Ministry of Transport that is an annual test of vehicle safety, roadworthiness, and the exhaust emissions. Our insurance on this vehicle along with the MOT amount is less than $400 per year in addition to the MOT, we also must pay the annual taxes, and they're very reasonable. Our most recent tax bill was just $80. We did find out during the registration this year that we must be in Veliko Ternovo to pay the tax bill. Yes, sometimes when you're dealing with foreign countries, there's a bit of a language barrier, and we unfortunately completely misunderstood this one requirement when we asked about the yearly renewal. We can have the MOT performed in any part of Bulgaria if they are licensed to provide the service, but the taxes must be paid in cash to the tax office in Veliko Tornovo. Demeter kindly accompanied us to the tax office this summer and he helped us to pay these taxes. 
We were really thankful for this because we speak not one word other than hello in Bulgarian. Bulgaria is not an unreasonable destination for us to go to, and it has a great deal of wonderful sights to explore from the large capital city of Sofia, to the beaches of Varna along the Black Sea, to the beautiful ski resort town of Bansko. It's all within reasonable driving distance from one of our most favorite countries in the world, the non shenyan country of Montenegro. It's also very close to Turkey, Greece, Serbia, and Romania. So let's break down the cost. So the car was listed for 8,000 euro, and Georgie from Cars Help negotiated the price down to 7,200. Now he takes 50% of the discount, so we actually paid 7,600 euro for the car, so we were able to save 400 off that price. We selected a car that was not gonna be ostentatious and stand out, and we just wanted to be able to blend in, and we also didn't wanna spend a whole lot of money for a car, since we weren't sure exactly how long we're gonna be driving it. So we bought a 2015 Citroen Berlingo. It had 155,500 kilometers on it when we bought it. And for the car insurance for one year, was $186 for the year. The attorney Demeter charges $630 for all of his help on the corporation. Car's help was $242. The inspection was $157. The temporary registration was $25. Registration fees were $220. The assist that we had going to the CAT, which is the DMV office, was $85. The transportation to ship the car from Germany to Bulgaria was $744. The vignetta, which is paid in lieu of tolls in Bulgaria, is $60. So those total of additional expenses for buying the car were $2,349. Plus the purchase price of the car with the euro exchange rate at that time was $9,120 for a total $11,469 and we were on the road. Now we did have some additional expenses because we're car owners. Our fuel cost has broken out to $120 per month on average. We had an oil change in Novisad that was $76.79 in, Serb in Serbia. And Brajov, Romania, the oil change was $100. Tolls and the average a month is probably breaking out to about $15. Now we've done a total of 14,912 miles on the car since we bought it over 17 months. So a bit over 800 miles per month on average. Now our renewal on the car insurance was just $152, so it went down. And our latest MOT cost $23.89, and the fire extinguisher we added was $13.27. Now let's talk a little bit about the downsides of owning a car in Europe, as well as the many mishaps and lessons we've been forced to learn in the past 17 months. When you do have a car, it adds a few things. You have to find a place to park, and these can be very tight spaces. Sometimes trying to park in cities can be difficult if you don't have a European phone, as they have an SMS in many locations, and these do not work with a US phone. We try to find an Airbnb with parking reserved for the unit or house because parking can be scarce in many European cities and just because the Airbnb listing shows free parking does not mean it's reserved for you. We've arrived at numerous Airbnbs and had to scramble to find parking or had to pay for parking for the entire month. Now some cities will have an app so you can use your credit card to pay for parking and that's great. Like Belgrade, we were able to use their app to pay for parking. We thought this was also going to cover Novi Sad, Serbia. We parked many times using this app, paying for parking. Unbeknownst to us, Novi Sad doesn't use this app. They use an SMS code type of thing, but the Belgrade app was letting me pay, so I kept paying, and we were unaware until we ended up with a ticket near our last day. So don't always count on the app in one city in the country to be the same in another country, even if it allows you to use it. We also parked our car near our Airbnb in Antalya, Turkey, and we had a lot of good luck with parking there, but unfortunately somebody backed into it and they left a big ding. This would have been a pretty expensive fix in the United States. We took it to get repaired in a company in Alanya, Turkey, and they repaired it for just $110, and we were very, very pleased, and that's repairing the paint as well. 
There are requirements for the vignetta in Bulgaria, and a vignetta is actually a toll pass. It actually is a requirement in several additional European countries as well. We were two hours past our vignetta expiration in Bulgaria, and we were pulled over. It was costly. We paid $70 for this mistake. You can buy your vignette online at vignettekey.bg. It's possible to buy it for a weekend, 10 days, one month, three months, or one year. Now, speed signs, they are not very plentiful. A lot of European countries just assume you're going to know what the speed is when you're driving into town, when you're out of a town, when you're on a highway, when you're on a, a freeway, and it's uh, a little bit confusing, especially when you hop country to country. They're not all the same. So if you have the Waze app, quite often they are going to show you the speed limit that you should be driving. You know, we don't have navigation in here, but check this out. Look at the phone. This is Julie's phone. But you can use Waze, the app in Europe. And the cool thing about Waze is that it shows you the speed limit. So you can see how fast you're going and what the speed limit is. So I'm going to 93. I'm going to drop down to 90. That's kilometers an hour, by the way. And now I'm going to speed limit. And in Europe, sometimes it's confusing to know if you're going too fast or what the speed limit is. So this will tell you if you're going too fast so you can slow down. And I actually have a, an audio um, thing on here too to let me know if I'm exceeding the speed limit. So Waze is a great app for Europe. I didn't even know they had it here, but this is probably the best way to go um, rather than Google's Maps or Google Maps or Apple Maps. Um, I think Waze is the way to, to travel with. But everything is going really good in this uh, new Citron Berlingo. So using the Waze app is recommended for driving around Europe. Now we unfortunately received our first speeding ticket for approximately $17, $17 for doing 20 kilometers per hour over the limit during our last visit to Bulgaria. Perhaps our most devastating mishap happened in Turkey in March. We're learning a lesson here that you can't have your car here even though you might have applied for residency. Um, your car where we were told six months here it can only be here for 90 days, so we don't know what's going on, and we might just leave Turkey tomorrow. Okay, so Abby's getting towed. We can't seem to stop it. They've got the tow truck over here now. We decided to obtain an easy residency in Turkey since we only needed to spend two months every two years in the country to maintain it. After being in the country almost five months, we came out from a great spa treatment to find the car was getting towed by John Dharma, which is customs because it was over 90 days in their country. We thought we had done our due diligence and we trusted the residency expert had explained things well about our vehicle being allowed in the country, but just like we talked about, there are translation issues and she didn't understand that we had a car and a company name, not a personal name like someone from another EU country may have had. So the rules in Turkey allow for the company vehicle to enter the country for 90 days and then after the car has been out of the country for an additional 185 days, it can then re-enter. So essentially, we as pending residents were allowed to remain in Turkey during the residency process, but our car was not. After days of going back and forth with the government office, we were able to get the car out of the impound. We had 10 days to get out of the country. Now, that might sound simple enough, but foreign policies are rarely simple, and this one was no exception. We drove 10 hours to the border, entered the line for the passport control to leave Turkey and enter Bulgaria, and as the guard flipped through our passports, I could see the puzzlement on his face. We finally asked him if there was an issue, and he proceeded to look at us, and we told him our story. Shockingly, he looked at us and said we had two options. We could either turn back around and head back into Turkey and await the decision on the ECOMET, which is a residency permit card, or we could proceed to the police station across from him and pay an overstay visa fine. Unfortunately, we had only one choice because the car had to leave the country by the end of that day, so we paid $300 in fines and exited the country. We feel we've truly learned a lot after crossing numerous borders and having our car now for 17 months at this point. We get a little savvier on each road trip, and overall, it's been great having the freedom Abby has given us. Without a doubt, we would move forward with purchasing the car again despite the mishaps. We hope that we gave you some good advice and knowledge today on how to have a car and drive around Europe. 
And we hope that you're going to follow us on a regular basis on International Living TV as Julie and I travel Europe with our two dogs, trying to show what it's like to live in different places and, and how to do it. So until next time, have a great day, everybody. Ciao. And there you have it, another episode of ILTV. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button below, turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos, and join me for next week's episode. Thank you.